But on the other hand, there were not such great quantities or such difficult ways to process in those days. It became more of a problem when people started to gather in greater numbers in villages and towns and when the production of goods started on a larger scale. Communities expanded. The need to dispose of waste increased. Waste had to be transported more efficiently. New methods of handling waste were developed. It was often a matter of reducing volume through combustion. Then the rubbish was transported out to the tip. The world's resources are being consumed at an increasingly rapid rate. Some resources are regenerated in a short time, while others require a very long time for their recreation. Most of us know this is not sustainable in the long run, but what are we prepared to do about it? The sorting of household and industrial waste at source was introduced in 1993. Waste is sorted according to its characteristics and treatment method. The aim is to increase recycling of material, and this has now become part of everyday life. The sorting out and utilization of waste suitable for composting is an example of recycling. Biodegradable waste is packed and placed in a separate bin. It is then collected and transported to the Vogelmira processing plant in special lorries. There, the waste is composted, and after about two months, it becomes what is called bio-earth. This bio-earth is ripened in strips before it's sieved through a screen and mixed with ordinary earth. Combustible waste, too, is collected in separate bins. The energy it contains is used to produce heat for district heating. In winter, combustible waste is transported from households directly to the district heating plant. In summer, when energy requirements are low, nothing is burned. Energy requirements are then met by heat pumps, which make use of the energy in wastewater from two large local industrial plants, the SSAB Steelworks and Kvarnsverden Paper Mill. As the flow of sorted combustible waste doesn't stop during the summer, this fuel must be stored until the heating season begins in October. To facilitate handling and keep the fuel dry, it's baled in a baling machine. These bales weigh about 600 kilograms each and contain energy equivalent to between 150 and 200 litres of oil. Since 1994, producers have been responsible for their packaging material. This means that manufacturers, fillers or importers of packaging must ensure their packaging is recycled. Packaging is mainly collected via recycling stations, usually close to large supermarkets. The material in metal packaging, both sheet steel and aluminium, can be recycled an unlimited number of times. Did you know, for example, that it only requires some 450,000 bottle tops to provide enough steel to make a normal sized car? Used paper packaging can also be turned into new packaging or becomes part of other products, such as the surface of plasterboard. Recycled corrugated cardboard is turned into new corrugated board. Newspaper and wrapping paper are returned to the pulp and paper industry and could be converted into new newsprint or toilet paper. Rigid plastic packaging, usually made of polythene, is also collected via recycling stations. This material is fine sorted and ground down, granulated, before moving up the recycling chain. Recycled plastic can be found in products such as fleece sweaters, toys, cable tape, waste bins and plastic bags. Glass can be recycled an unlimited number of times. A clear glass is turned into new food containers. There is less demand for coloured glass as packaging material, but it can be used in the manufacture of insulation material, for example. This is why it's important to sort glass into coloured and clear. It requires less energy to recycle existing packaging material compared to the use of new raw material. 
At recycling stations, there are also containers for what is called landfill waste. Landfill waste is waste which cannot be recycled or reused in any sensible way. This waste ends up on the refuse tip, but if there is careful sorting, very little needs to end up in these containers. They're mainly intended for small items such as china, small parts from bicycles, household utensils of metal, cooking pots, saucepans and cutlery for example, drinking glasses, glass mirrors and the like. Furniture, car engines and other bulky items must not be left at the recycling stations. The kinds of waste we've mentioned so far don't cause the worst environmental problems. It is of course essential that waste materials are correctly sorted if they're to be recycled. Now we're going to look at environmentally dangerous waste. Poisonous substances, chemicals, oils, heavy metals and the like will, if they end up on the refuse tip, sooner or later leak out and affect their surroundings. Chemicals exhibit a nasty characteristic. Two or more chemicals, the properties of which are known, can combine to form new compounds with totally unknown properties. There are several examples of this. There are boxes for small household batteries at all our recycling stations. All household batteries are collected. These batteries are transported to a specialist company, Dollar Special of File AB, where they're sorted according to type. The sorted batteries are sent on to different places for processing, depending on what they contain. The car batteries are too large to go in the box, and they mustn't be left on the ground at the recycling station. They're either returned to a point where new ones are sold, or to the collection center for environmentally harmful waste at Forgelmere. Environmentally harmful household waste is accepted at two man stations at the big recycling centre at Vogelmira and at Dala Special of Fale B, which is more centrally located. There's a ring and we will collect service for those households which are unable to transport environmentally harmful waste. It's important, however, that someone is at home to hand over the harmful waste to the collector. The collection system and information about harmful household waste has its own symbol, the red ant. Electronic or electrical waste material has been collected on a voluntary basis by the radio and TV trade for a number of years. Private individuals have, without obligation to buy anything new, been able to hand in their old TV, stereo or computer to their closest radio and TV shop. We've then collected these discarded products. Producers are now also responsible for a large part of all electrical and electronic household waste. The local authority has organized and set up a collection point and system, while producers organize and look after transportation from collection points to dismantling plants. Electrical and electronic waste contains many substances which are harmful to the environment. Environmentally harmful components must be removed before the remainder of the waste material is put through various processes, including the recovery of metals. It's estimated that ordinary light bulbs thrown away every year in Sweden alone add an additional 14 tonnes of lead to refuse tips. We're surrounded by a vast number of products in our everyday lives, which must now be sorted, collected in and stored separately from other waste. Toasters, telephones, electric cookers, washing machines, faxes, computers, TV sets, light bulbs and fluorescent tubes, battery-driven hand tools and a lot more. In principle, everything that needs a power source, mains or battery in order to work. In Borlänger, waste collection is centred on the Forgelmira recycling station. Forgelmira is the hub in our waste handling organisation. Here, it's possible for residents in the municipality to sort and dispose of their waste. All kinds of waste can be handed in at the centre, from packaging material to environmentally harmful and electronic waste. There will probably always be some things that end up on a refuse tip, but why should we put more there than we have to? You and I decide the problems our descendants will have to face. Will we go to history as the generation who knew better, 
but still did things the wrong way? Or will we go to history as those who made an effort to change the course of events?